Hey guys, Ash here from C4A Tech and welcome to part 3 of my list of top 20 apps that you must have on your Android device in 2014. So if you haven't seen the previous parts, make sure you click on the link that's annotated on this video or you can find the link to those videos right below the like button. So for this part, app number 11 on the list is G Player. So this is a video player with a pretty good interface. It can handle almost all major popular codecs. It gives you your regular popular options found in third party players like on the left a slide for brightness controls, on the right for volume controls and at the bottom to seek. So it's a pretty decent player but that's not all that special about it. So it can actually pop out. So there you go. And you can still control brightness and volume and you can just tap on the sides to resize and then tap again to bring up the controls. So this is not the only reason why I like this player. One of the major things I use it for is when you're watching something on YouTube. So let's quickly go to YouTube, load up our video. So when the video is playing, just tap over here, hit share. And I've scrolled on find G player. And now if you've got YouTube playing in a pop-up window. One of the things I dislike the most about Google's YouTube player is that once you leave the player, the video stops playing. So if you're listening to an audio track on YouTube, you cannot do anything else really. This is where G-Player steps in. You can just pop the player out and continue doing whatever you want. So that's G-Player for you. So guys, the next app on the list is Helium Backup. What I like about Helium Backup is that it does not require root access to function. If you do have root access, that is good. You do not need to plug your phone into a PC, but without root access, you just need to connect your phone to the PC and perform a few steps, and then you can still back up all your apps and data. So if required, you can just back up app data, and that would keep the file size low, but if not, you can also back up entire apps and data. All the backups would be stored on a folder called Carbon. You can either store the backup onto your internal storage, or you can upload it to Google Drive so that you can restore it on any device whenever you want. The reason I like this app a lot is because with some devices you need to unlock the bootloader to root them and when you unlock the bootloader your device gets wiped. So say a few months after you start using your phone you decide to root it, you need to lose all your apps and data. That's where Helium steps in. But then again if you have root access the best backup app to use would be Titanium Backup. So this gives you a lot more control, it, al it also allows you to create multiple backups, freeze apps, uh, uninstalled system apps and so on. You can also set up scheduled backups. There are a lot of things that you can do with Titanium Backup. I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail with Titanium Backup. I have separate videos on both Helium Backup as well as Titanium. So if you guys want to know more about either of these, I'll leave links to that right below the like button along with links to the Play Store. So feel free to check that out. The next app on the list is Focal Camera. Focal Camera's rise to popularity can largely be attributed to the fact that it used to be CyanogenMod's camera app for a bit before the developer decided to leave when CyanogenMod went corporate. It's a pretty simplistic app with a clean interface that's got quite a lot of options. Apart from that, just slide up from the shutter button, you get to choose your camera, swap camera, uh, swap front and back cameras that is. You have a panorama mode that is a hit and a miss, the video mode, and that is your Pixbia mode. This is similar to the Photospia mode uh, found on Nexus devices, but this is for the focal camera app. Being an app that is in beta, there are issues with certain phones. There are certain bugs that we come across from time to time. But then again, it comes with a host of features. So overall, if you want to try something different from the regular camera that your phone ships with, I definitely recommend you guys to give focal camera a try. So guys, the next app on the list is Camera KK. So uh, the same developer came out with Camera JB Plus, which I've used for quite a while. So uh, this is just your KitKat camera. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is no Photosphere option available over here, but it is pretty similar to what you'd see on an Nexus device. So if you're just tired of your manufacturer's uh, camera app and you want to give Google's Nexus camera a shot without having to root and flash your phone, Camera KK delivers you the closest experience possible. So once again guys, links to all these apps from the Play Store can be found right below the like button in the description. So I guess that's pretty much it, we are out of time, so what do you think about the apps used in the video, do you like them, do you think you could find them useful, or are you already using them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So once again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys soon in the next part. Till then, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off, you guys have a great day, bye bye now.